get started. So, um, and I'll tell you where we're located physically also and um, our contacts at the very end as well. Um, so I just wanted to give you an overview of what I will be talking about in addition to our um, career services, what we do, but I also included a little bit of a activity for all of us. Um, it's a, uh, for personal branding, so kind of an exercise um, that you'll be doing later on too when you're, whether it's writing your resume or kind of determining um, is this like an internship that's good for me or a job that's good for me? A lot of it also goes back to um, knowing kind of like your strengths and weaknesses and how you qualify for um, different positions. So I will do a 15 minutes for an activity um, and we'll kind of go around the Zoom session, kind of share, um, you can, uh, if you're more comfortable verbally speaking it, that's fine. Um, you can also type it in and I'll just read it out. But I just wanted to kind of get a sense of um, kind of like a reflective exercise with everyone. And I will start off that activity. Um, and then um, going over the overview and then the Q&A. So let's get started. Um, so I would like everyone to kind of pick um, either a, think about either your personal strength or um, something that you're kind of weaker in um, and then thinking about how do you plan on either using the strength of yours or improving um, the weakness. So part of what personal branding is, is if any of you are familiar with uh, branding in general, the concept of branding, right? there's so many brands right now um, and every brand, let's say like Nike, Google, um, Facebook, right? There are certain values or things that you know right away, even logos, right, are part of um, an entity's brand um, identity, if you want to think of it. So personal branding is about yourself, right? So how are you um, first understanding like who you are, how you want to portray yourself? In this case, it'd be in the professional sense um, for your careers. And then how do you express it through various mediums? So this could be um, in person when you're interacting with someone. Um, it could be through a Zoom session like we are now. Um, you know, your online presence, right? A lot of us have social media accounts. LinkedIn is a professional social media platform that we use. So all of these different avenues, if you have a, um, you know, a website or an e-portfolio, let's say, that's also part of your personal branding. Like how, what are you sharing um, to kind of create this, um, I want to say necessarily image, but you know, if I were to ask someone about you, what would they say, right? That's all about who you are, what you stand for. Um, let's say if we're talking about professionals, um, in the professional realm, your work ethic, so how you represent yourself in all these different avenues. So um, this is kind of like the beginning part of understanding and building your personal brand. Um, so take, I wanted to uh, maybe give a couple of minutes to think about either picking a strength or a weakness and then how you plan on improving or kind of using, incorporating that strength. And maybe for those of you who know what career avenues you want already, how that strength can help you. Um, or if you're unsure, and that's perfectly you know, fine too. I actually didn't know what I wanted to do when I first um, came in um, to college and I kind of changed my mind a couple of times too, but I've always kind of used my personal strength to kind of help me navigate those avenues. Um, so kind of a, a little bit of that. So maybe I'm gonna give you three minutes, two to three minutes to think about um, what you wanna say and then we'll kind of go around the room and then I'll start it off also. Um, so we'll maybe around 10, 14, 10, 10, 15, we'll um, kind of start the discussion. So think about um, one strength or a weakness and what you plan on how to utilize that. Any questions first before we? All right then. So at 1015, I will kind of circle back with everyone.
Okay. Um, all right, it's 10.15. Does anyone need any more time? Let's see. Still have all right, I'm going to give it another minute for you all to wrap up and then we'll go around the room. Um, Crystal, I have Randy's answer since he has some mic issues. So if you want, I can read that. Oh, start. yeah, sure. I think Dante typed it into the chat message also. Oh, great. Yeah. So, um, Ken, why don't you start with Randy's and then I'll, I'll do Dante's and then um, we'll go from there. Okay, so Randy's strength, one of his, one of his strengths, because he has many, I am quite sure, is that he is persistent, which I really like. That is a great strength. And one weakness is that he tends to be tardy, which he plans on improving by forcing myself to be early. That's great. That's um, all right. And then, um, so I think that's, that's, those are both great understanding. So, um, you know, obviously not everyone's, no one's really perfect, right? Um, so if you tend to be late, definitely preparing ahead of time, maybe even mapping out, um, let's say if you were to go to an interview, right? You wanna map out your travel plans before, allocate more time so that you're not rushing and then you end up becoming late at the end. So that's definitely something to take into account. Um, so for your strength, persistence is always good too, right? So you have to really go for what it is you want to pursue. Um, and I think Dante um, shared one of his, uh, one, one of my weaknesses is perfectionism, and that plays into issues with time management. To improve, I've been setting time-based goals for completing tasks at work, so I don't spend too much time on one thing. Absolutely, I think I have a little bit of um, the same issue sometimes where I really want to make sure everything is as perfect as I can get it to be, but you know, a lot of times we're working within time constraints, so having developing a set of um, strong time management skills it's definitely going to be a plus in any avenue, whether it's in your personal life or professional life. Um, and I definitely employ a lot of technology to help me do that, whether it's setting like reminders on my phone, having, um, you know, a schedule, a daily to do list. Um, I have like every hour or every half hour, I should say, is marked off with a particular task that I need to be doing. Um, and I started doing this when I was in undergrad as well for my assignments. I would take a planner, plan everything out by the day, by the week. Like if it's a larger assignment, I would kind of break it out um, by the week to see, okay, today I'll be working on this assignment. Tomorrow I'll be working on another one. And I kind of break it out in stages if I need to, because I know that if I just kind of wait until the last minute, it's going to be not as great as I want it to be, right? Because I'm kind of rushing. Um, so for myself, I wanted to share um, a weakness that I've kind of been working on, right? So this is something um, that you might actually be asked during an interview. Um, what is your professional strength or, or what is, um, you know, your professional weakness? And for me, um, one of the things that I think I've always been not so great as is working with like any kind of math calculations. Um, now at times in higher ed, there's a lot of data involved or really any industry, very data driven. So one of the things that I wasn't quite so good at was looking and analyzing data, right? So this is like working on Excel, things like that. So when I went and went back for my master's, I actually um, forced myself to take um, um, data related courses. So um, there's a course called um, institutional research and it's all about data, right? Understanding and using data. So for me, in terms of how I plan to improve on it, I kind of use my academic setting to really train myself so that I can um, start working on improving that area. So one of the things that I would recommend all of you doing is taking a look at um, the strengths and weaknesses and seeing how your academics can help you kind of navigate and strengthen these areas. So I'm gonna pass on the mic to the next student. Um, I can't really, cause I'm in presentation mode. So Ken, do you wanna pick the next student? Or whoever wants to volunteer, we could do it that way too. Uh, let's see, I have uh, Michelle, since I see you, you're the first name on my list. So 
I apologize. Um, when I wrote down monsters, I, I said one of the strengths was time management because most of the internships that I had actually revolved what I want to continue, which is social media. So a lot of things were fast paced, which was good on my end because it helped me realize this, this is where I want to be. However, one of my weaknesses I said was communication, not necessarily like talking with um, my employer or the um, peers that I was wor was working with. Mainly, I was the kind of person that when a problem arose, I didn't really address it as soon as it happened, which is a problem. And I'm, um, what we talked about in the previous sessions is like, as soon as a problem arises, I should see if I could fix it first. And if I, I, that's the way I'm working on. So yeah, definitely, that definitely comes up. Um, and I think, especially when, when you're just kind of starting off, you kind of, well, I was very shy too to speak up, but I realized that, you know, if there is an issue that I can solve, it is always better to kind of communicate that so that everyone's kind of on the same page. And, you know, there's nothing unexpected that might come across later. Um, so I think I see Mel after in my order. So Mel, if you want to unmute yourself and share. Um, so for one of my strengths, I said that I was very strong-willed. I'm one of the kind of people where you could say something and be like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, let me keep going with my idea kind of thing. Like, I'm going to make sure everybody knows it. But also one of my weaknesses is the same thing, being so strong-willed, because I'll think that my idea is the only idea that's right. And I want to go into law. So it's one of those things where I'm like, the law is right, but my own ideas and thoughts on, is it actually the right crime, pretty much? Like, are they being charged with the right thing? Like, my opinion is very different than maybe what it could be interpreted as. I also watch too much Law and Order. So I, like, see how they act. And then I'm like, oh, I can be obnoxiously strong-willed like some of the characters, and we're all good. And it's really not, it's actually a really bad thing I've learned in life. <laughs> um, I think if um, later on, if you get a chance to do like some shadowing or like legal internships, you kind of get to observe how um, existing professionals kind of handle and interact with each other. And, you know, so that will kind of give you a better idea of what, how, how far you can kind of, if you need to like kind of put your foot down and um, stand by your stance, like how does that actually play out? So there's like different things we can, um, we can kind of look into to kind of test out, like, you know, how to um, you incorporate your personality within those different fields that you, everyone wants to pursue. Um, I think on my list also next is Dante is shared. So um, let's see, there's Diana. Okay, so one of my strengths I put was that I'm a fast learner. So like if the teacher were to show me like how to solve a problem, right off the bat, I'll get it right away. So that's one of my strengths. One of my weaknesses was time management. So even though I'm a fast learner, like to certain stuff, a certain subject, when it comes to like the workload, I get really stressed out. So I focus on one subject all the time. And then when it comes to the other subjects, I'm like, oh, I want to do this no more. Like, I don't have enough time to just finish it throughout the whole day. So it was like, I said how to improve was like, setting up certain times, like, okay, I have to finish this assignment in an hour, and then I have to, I have to start another assignment, like in another two hours to give myself a break. So yeah, I would definitely, um, if, if you know there are certain subjects that maybe you're not as good at, or if you need more time, like let's say after like your first um, assignment, like the, the thing, the, I guess the great thing about time management is that there's a bit of flexibility that's molded into it. So when you, um, let's say, set a schedule, um, if you realize that after your original schedule, like maybe you need more time going forward, I would kind of make those adjustments so that you can allocate more time um, for those areas that kind of, oh, you know, maybe originally you set one hour or half an hour, and then you realize, oh, I need more time, then um, if you had to do like, if it's a repetitive kind of activity or an exercise for your assignments, let's say, I would recommend building in more time to kind of um, building into it or reaching out for additional help, right? So at Pace, we have a lot of 
the learning center, writing center, like tutors um, that you can kind of go into. Um, so that you can utilize to help develop, especially in those subjects that you're not so great in. Um, and, you know, we, between, you know, career counselors, right, we're definitely here to help you with the professional development, anything career related, and then your academic advice. So there's a lot of resources that I would utilize, and I definitely did um, as an undergrad to kind of help me go through so that I'm not spending more than the time that I have to allocate for different areas. Um, so yeah, so thanks for sharing that. And then I think on my list, I also have Rand, uh, Rand did Randy share already? Okay, um, I have, I think I see Sully Sullivan. Hi, so for my strength, I would say it's my personality um, because people tend to like me, so they hire me. Um, that, that sounds bad, but, um, and then also, you know, like if I like something, I will get really into it. Um, but on the flip side, once I start not liking a job, I just stop showing up. And I know that's bad, but like, I just stop showing up um, and then I just get annoyed. So, yes. Oh, oh, how do I plan to improve? I know I can't continue doing that, especially, you know, like moving into a professional career. So I guess I'll just choose jobs better, you know, like stuff that I really do want to do and not just for the moment. Uh, yes, I definitely um, think, um, and I would also maybe take some time to understand, like, or, you know, a reflective, like, for now, let's say pick an example from back then where you kind of meet something that didn't maybe sit well with you and see, well, what what actually didn't sit well and how could have you maybe used it? Maybe it was a communication, um, like improving communication between if it's like with another person or also thinking about if you're thinking about the types of work environment um, that you are enjoy more or not enjoy more. But no, I want to say this though, no one workplace will always be perfect in all senses. There will always be, um, you know, either big or small, something that doesn't necessarily fit with you 100%. Um, so we, then that's a kind of an avenue to think about, well, how do I turn this into something that's more manageable or um, kind of working with, especially if you're working with different people, um, you want to think about, you know, we're all unique individuals, right? So when we're working together collaboratively, there's bound to be um, times when we have disagreements or, or we don't see eye to eye, but we still need to work together. So definitely thinking about, well, um, you know, the different, what exactly is it that doesn't, you know, quite make it like the ideal scenario for you and then coming to see, well, how do I make it, you know, work better? Um, and that's, that's a conversation we can have like later, um, you know, and there's like di different people handle different um, scenarios differently. So I would definitely, that could be something that you can do for like informational interviews or just kind of having a conversation. Um, and we can definitely um, do something later as a larger group if more students are kind of interested in talking about how do I kind of overcome some of these um, scenarios that, you know, I don't actually know how to handle or doesn't quite fit so well with, you know, who you are. Um, so we can, that's definitely a larger discussion to have, but thank you so much for um, sharing, Sully. And um, did I miss anyone? Nicole, do you want to share or? Jamita. Jamita. Um, Jamita's on mute, so I don't know if you want to I, she has herself. Oh, there she is. Oh, okay. So I'm in a car right now. Oh, okay. Are you driving? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, no problem then. Um, let's see. Anyone else that I miss, Ken? Uh, no, I think we got all the okay. students. Wow. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, so I hope this kind of like little exercise just kind of kick-started, um, you know, starting to think about your kind of personal brand, who you are, um, and how it kind of connects with some of the areas of interest that you're interested in pursuing, 
Um, and, you know, even within every industry, there are different types of what we call job function. So essentially in each of those roles, you'll be doing different things. So let's say for those of you who want to go into the law field, there's actually um, different avenues within the law field, not just an attorney, but there are also other occupations as well within the legal field, same for any field, right? Um, so thinking about, well, kind of doing more of a career exploration, which is something that we can definitely help you with navigating as well. That is one of the actual appointment types that we can, um, that you can uh, register for, and we can have a larger discussion, do some research. We can give you pointers usually on how to conduct that research to figure out exactly how your strengths, weaknesses, interests, right, fit into some of these uh, more specific roles within the industries that you're interested in. And then if you have a different interest, right, or you are quite unsure of what is my personal strength, then we can also do exercises and a discussion on how to find that out as well. Um, so now I'm going to um, continue with talking a little bit about the overview of um, career services. Okay, so basically there are different ways that we meet with students and um, different mediums that we also meet with students. So for appointments right now, um, it's usually either with by telephone or um, virtually via Zoom. Um, we also use um, Skype for Business and um, we also have Blackboard Collaborate, but I think most students tend to prefer Zoom because it's more user-friendly, I feel, um, on my end. But in terms of appointment types, I already mentioned one, which is career exploration. But we work with students on resumes, um, you know, teach, uh, guiding you on how to write a more effective cover letter. Um, we do conduct mock interviews also, right? Practice makes perfect. So the more um, interviews you do, the better understanding you have of, okay, how do I conduct myself during an interview? Especially every, everyone has, I like to call their own interview persona. So um, the more you do it, the more you kind of get a better understanding of what kind of style of um, presenting yourself um, suits your personality and also for the industries that you're interested in going to. And you kind of get a sense of, um, what kind of interviewer style you can come across. Um, everyone's a little different too on the flip side. Um, so how to kind of um, interact with those different styles. Other things that we um, can help you with is with job searches, internship, uh, internship searches as well, or if anyone's interested in, um, you know, let's say going to figuring out, do you wanna go to grad school? Um, do you wanna take a gap year? Like those kind of things. Um, we also have, can help you on, you know, how to build a LinkedIn profile, um, how to like perfect your handshake profile as well. So handshake, and I'll go into it a little more later, but it's the platform that we use to really connect with students. So there's the job board that's on there with all the opportunities that we have. Um, you make your appointments on handshake as well. And then all of our events. So that's the other thing that we do with students is that we try to connect you or find opportunities to connect you with employers. Um, this is through, um, right now everything's virtual, so our virtual employer spotlights. Um, we can do special presentations as well. Let's say you're part of um, a student organization and you want us to come in to talk about you know, any topic that's career related, kind of like today's presentation, um, we do those as well. And then um, in the fall, we will have our virtual career fairs um, where you can, you know, similar to um, in-person career fairs is where you have a number of employers there um, that you can meet with for opportunity and apply for opportunities on the spot. Um, so the employer spotlights are usually a mix of, um, they might have some opportunities they're recruiting for, um, but it's also a way to learn about different employers that you might not have known about. Um, and maybe even discovering opportunities or job roles or functions that you didn't think about associating with um, that particular employer. So let's say for um, like a hospital, right? Anyone who's interested in healthcare, a hospital doesn't just have doctors and nurses, but they also have um, departments that are more geared towards like business, uh, more geared towards marketing, uh, more geared towards facilities, right? Um, just the everyday um, and many others. So there's, um, you, you can kind of do exploration by also attending some of these events as well as doing your online research. Um, so 
Other things that we do um, to help students is our workshops. So right now we have our resume workshop, our cover letter workshop, um, interview lab workshop, and our LinkedIn workshop. Um, so these are the current four that we have. Um, and what the workshops do is kind of give you like an intro um, for the resume. It is also step one of what we call our market ready process. So in Handshake, I mentioned before that we have our job portal. So right now for students who um, want to start applying through Handshake, you have to become what we call market ready. So that means attending one um, resume workshop and also meeting with a counselor so that we can work with you to perfect your um, resume. And then you, once you get your resume approved, then you'll get access to our job portal. So what we wanna make sure by having this market ready in place is that um, not only is your resume you know, completed, but it is tailored for those industries and those roles that you're all interested in um, applying for. So that's why usually if you are unsure of you know, what you want to do going forward, or maybe you're not quite as familiar with the industry and what type of roles you're interested in, I do recommend doing a career exploration appointment beforehand, because when we go to your resume, we start helping you tailor for some of those skills um, that might be more specific to the industry. So for example, if anyone is interested in let's say the legal field, a lot of it is analytic skills, communication, um, and then kind of doing more in that realm. But let's say if you're going for, um, you know, I work with the arts and sciences, so a lot of um, communications, more creative fields, um, then that gets more technical. Um, there's like artistic skills that come into play. Um, definitely communications is, is the underlying skill, I feel like for an, any field. Um, so, but there are differences, right? So if you ever look up two different postings, even for the same role across two different companies, they're not quite exactly the same. So we want to kind of through these uh, market ready process, we want to teach you how to analyze um, the postings and kind of determine, well, how do I kind of tweak my experience to reflect the particular qualifications that they're looking for. So this is a process that we will definitely teach you and guide you through, um, through the appointments and workshops. Um, so, and if any of you have never written a cover letter or wanna kind of improve your cover letter, I would definitely recommend looking into um, the cover letter workshop. And we take students step-by-step step through all the different sections that go into a cover letter. We also explain, you know, how do you look for someone to address it to. Um, we give you formulas on how to kind of craft this, the body paragraphs of a cover letter. Um, and usually you, in an application, you will have a resume and a cover letter. Um, and then our interview lab is kind of like a condensed version of, um, similar to right now where I had that little exercise where you kind of get to practice what we call your 30 second pitch. Um, basically, how do you introduce yourself um, if you were to meet an employer, what do you say? Um, do you go over your whole life story or are you, are you kind of giving them very specific information so that they're interested enough to kind of continue that conversation, right? And sometimes you only have 30 seconds or a minute um, to introduce yourself and then they move on to the next student. So to leave the right impression, what do you need to say? And so that kind of, we go over that in that workshop. Um, and then the LinkedIn one, for any of you who um, don't know or are unfamiliar with LinkedIn, we kind of teach you how to, um, what sections to fill in for your profile, how to approach those sections. Um, we kind of give you some tips on how to use LinkedIn beyond just you know building your network, what you can use it for. Um, it's kind of multi-purpose, I would like to say. And it, and even if let's say you're not familiar or um, it's a good way to kind of do research also, right? To do some career exploration um, because you essentially have the entire or a majority of a professional's career trajectory already there. Um, so, and it's free for the most part, right? Um, so it's a, a nice resource to have to do some career exploration um, and also industry research. Um, any questions so far? Okay, all right, so next slide. Um, so I did wanna give you kind of an overview of Handshake itself and I will do a little demo as well.
But as I mentioned before, we have all of our um, jobs and internships opportunities in Handshake. Um, so if you see the tab right here, there will be a tab that says jobs. So until you're market ready though, this um, when you click on this, there's a little box to tell you, oh, you need to contact career services. It's not an error or a technical thing. It just means that um, you haven't completed the market ready process yet. Um, and But once you do, that box will lift and then you will see, uh, be able to access all the filters, the opportunities themselves. Um, and then next to it, you'll have the events tab. So any of our workshops in the fall when we have our virtual career fairs again, upcoming employer spotlights, and we try to have right now at least um, anywhere from one to three employer spotlights every week. So I definitely recommend keeping an eye out on that tab to see if there's any employer um, that you want to meet. So these events are great because you kind of get to introduce yourself even virtually right to an employer, a professional um, before you even submit your application. It's like kind of um, your chance to leave a good first impression with an employer as well as to learn about this new employer that you might have not heard about before. Um, so I know I think upcoming this week, I think we have like two or three already. Um, I think one of them is ADP, which is tomorrow, I believe. Um, and I think there's one other, but I'll show you um, kind of what give you a snapshot of what's coming up this week. Um, and then our workshops themselves. So the resume, the LinkedIn cover letter, all of that is in the events tab as well. Um, and then if you click on Career Center, and I'll give you a demo after this, um, that's where you're going to go to actually make any appointment requests. So let's say if you've completed um, your resume workshop and you want to make an appointment to meet with a counselor, that's where you would go to do it. Um, so, uh, oh, the appointments are usually 30 minutes. Um, with the exception of interview, the interview one is one hour. Um, we give you more time because during a mock interview, what we usually do is do the, the mock and then we kind of give you um, feedback on what you need to improve. Um, and then we kind of ask you what areas you're not you know, comfortable. So we do al allocate more time for the interview appointment, um, but the rest of them are usually half an hour. Um, so yes. So actually, let's go into, um, I do want to show you Handshake a little bit more. All right, so this is actually a student's um, Handshake profile. So um, once you sign into Handshake and you're gonna sign in using your PACE credentials. So basically once you enroll, uh, um, into PACE, you kind of get the accounts, all, it's really the email and your password that you set up that you're going to use for Handshake. So this is your profile. Um, the jobs tab is here. So once you are market ready, you'll kind of be able to go into here and you can um, find opportunities. So um, the events tab though is where I really want to show you. Um, so events, it kind of is uh, very user friendly. It'll show you if you're registered for any appointments, upcoming events, fairs, um, it shows you right here on the right hand side as a reminder. And then um, it also defaults to any events that are happening today. So today we actually have three um, employers coming um, that you um, students are meeting with. Um, EY, New York Life, um, and then events this week, there's um, our there's orientation, um, the ADP employer spotlight, our workshop, there's a workshop tomorrow also. Um, you know, we also have, uh, these are more educational um, in terms of like developing specific skills. So how to leverage your skill and shape your internship with learning objectives. Right, so meaning if you acquired an internship, how do you kind of use what you gain to further develop um, your career, let's say. Um, and then, you know, so Asian American Federation. So there's a lot of events coming up. So I would definitely um, take a look at what's coming up. And if there is anyone that you're interested, you can click on um, any one of them, let's say, and then hit RSVP, just register for the event. Sometimes if there's more specific instructions, I would read through the posting here to learn more about, well, how do I access this, right? If it's, there's usually a Zoom link. Um, and then once you register, 
they'll send you a separate email with the password itself. Um, so that's really how to kind of look up events. And then if you're searching for particular events, let's say you can hit search event. Um, and then in the search bar, let's say um, those of you who want to start the market ready process later on, let's say um, you can type in resume and then um, it's called rock your resume workshop. So tomorrow's our first one, but let's say maybe tomorrow's not good, right? Or you wanna do like a future date. Um, we usually try to set them up, so by semester. So let's say the beginning of summer, we'll have all the summer sessions scheduled. Um, and then in the fall, we'll have, so by, since we moved up the start date to August 24th, um, you'll see the rest of the fall workshop. So maybe you wanna do it the, Second week, now that we started, um, I would click RSVP and then, um, you know, at the time, this is the link you're going to enter when we start the workshop. Um, and then maybe after you do your workshop, oh, I want to set up an appointment. How do I do that? Then you want to go to Career Center here on the right and um, you'll see appointments. So then you click on that and then schedule a new appointment. So if you have any past appointments, they'll show up here. So when you hit schedule a new appointment, um, depending on what campus you're on, I'm in New York City, um, then the type, right? So I mentioned before, there's the career exploration, um, resume review will be the one to continue with Market Ready. And um, sometimes it takes more than one appointment, right? Because it's only 30 minutes. So then you want to, um, you know, it depends on how much work there is to do with a student. So I usually try to, um, I think the average is maybe like two to three sessions, um, sometimes more. There's no like right or wrong, right? It's just however many appointments it takes to make sure that your resume is strong enough for those opportunities. Because you really only have one shot to make that first impression. So then you want to make sure that that resume really highlights all your qualifications for a particular position. And that's where we come into play to kind of help you make sure that that is the case. Cover letter interview preparation and mock interview is the one I mentioned that was an hour, um, LinkedIn, job search, handshake help. Um, and then we also have office hours. So these are shorter. They're usually 15 minutes and it's for like, let's say you, you've met with us uh, once or you know, a couple of times, but then you have a quick question about, um, oh, how do I actually tailor for this opportunity? Or you maybe you just had a quick question. Um, so you can schedule an office hour appointment as opposed to one of these. Um, if you only need something shorter. So most counselors um, during the summer, each school has at least one hour a day allocated for office hours. And then we have time set up for our appointments. So once you select, let's say I wanna do a resume review, then you wanna see, well, what are the times that are available? So when it's grayed out like this, that means there's no availability and you can kind of see it in the text here. But maybe I want to jump ahead. Um, and you can use the calendar feature to figure out, oh, what's the best time? Maybe my next time is um, next week, right? On Friday, let's say. Um, then you can see over here, the counselor's names, and there's usually more than one counselor's names. Um, every team has a different number. So Dyson, I think is myself and Donna Holder. So there's two of us. Seidenberg has two counselors currently. Um, and Lubin is larger, so they have a larger team. So, but you'll see the names here. And then this is the important part though. So this is where you see the time. Um, so let's say you have time at 12, then you click 12. And then now, because we're meeting not in person, if you click on the drop down, it'll show you what the mediums are for that particular counselor. So right now it's usually telephone and Zoom. So if you prefer telephone, Zoom is a little better because we get to share screen so we can look at your documents together, but maybe you're on a lunch break or something like that and you don't have access to a computer, you can also do a telephone appointment. So those are the two options. And then you would put your note in here, especially if you're very specific, maybe you're tailing for something or you need help in a particular area. Um, you can leave a comment here for that particular counselor so they know exactly what it is you need help with then you hit request. So usually requests are reviewed um, within 24 hours. Um, so the next, they do it in the morning. So um, if you do it in the afternoon or in the evening, um, they will review it the next day, next business day, I should say. And then you'll get a notification of whether or not it's approved 
um, or denied. So most of the time it will be approved though, unless there's a conflict. Uh, so that's pretty much handshake. Um, and then the, the last thing I really wanted to go over with you is Blackboard itself. So Blackboard is the other um, important resource that we um, work with students on, and this is really more for you. So Blackboard has all of our online resources. So if you go instead of um, courses, you're gonna click on organizations and then look for career resources and then your school. So those of you who are in Dyson, it will say Dyson. And then if you're part of the New York City campus, NYC, um, if you're in Lubin, um, it will say Lubin, same for Seidenberg. And then um, School of Ed and um, College of Health Professions also has their own um, site as well. And then inside we have the different tabs for the different areas. So Rock Your Resume is where we have the, uh, we have a shorter video version of our workshop also if let's say you can't come if you can't let's say the time of the a workshop doesn't fit with your schedule you can take watch this little video answer the question and you'll still get the credit for the workshop however the video is only like 16 minutes long so it's very much condensed so if you, I would recommend if you have the time to sit in on a, the workshop itself the full one it's an hour long I would do that so you get more out of it um, and then there are other different videos for how to ace your interview. Maybe you don't have time to come meet with us. We have a series of short videos um, for tips on how to prepare, uh, what to expect during, and how to um, what to do post interview. Same for search strategies. Um, we also even have a video on how to conduct yourself during a career fair. Um, and then we have links to all our other websites. So Handshake Career Services website also has a explore your major if you, um, for the career exploration. Um, and, and then for those of you who sign up for the cover letter work at, uh, workshop, we also have additional handouts that you will find here as well. So there's different things um, that we provide online as well as uh, more interactive, right? All those different things. Um, and then really that's kind of concludes my um, overview of career services. So, um, when we get back to campus, uh, um, and if we're allowed to meet in person again, we are located on 41 Park Row on the 14th floor. Um, so we're actually on the 14th floor of the same building as um, TRIO or um, SSS, uh, Student Support Services. So we're neighbors actually. Um, and then this is our um, front desk office, like our office number. If there's any questions that you have, let's say um, if you're having trouble with Handshake or you um, are having trouble with our Handshake website and you can't make an appointment there, or you don't see any time slots that are available, you can reach out to us directly via phone um, or email at careers at pace.edu as well. Um, so now I'm just gonna open up the remainder time um, for questions. Hey, just so you know, we have about five minutes for questions before our next group comes in. So <clears throat> if you have questions, go ahead. Uh, Michelle. Michelle? Oh, you might want to unmute yourself first. Sorry. Okay. Oh, no problem. This is like a little bit picky for the workshops, but I noticed that you didn't have portfolio workshops for my major. I'm required to have portfolios for my interviews. So if I came in to like a resume workshop, could we also work on the portfolio as well? We typically, I don't think we have a, a standard um, guideline for portfolios because not all majors have it, but we could definitely have a discussion. And then I would also tap into your faculty members um, who specialize in those areas as well, but that would be more of a one-on-one -on -one appointment that we would have and talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that can be something. And definitely, Michelle, that's something your faculty members, and that's why it's important to develop good relationships early yes. with faculty members is because they're going to help you work to develop that on your own or together to develop the things that will go in a portfolio. Correct. Um, and I would definitely keep good relationships early also because especially if, let's say, um, you're thinking about like references, um, later on or uh, recommendations, letters of recommendations. Um, you know, 
I, I would start developing these relationships early too. Um, and they, and everyone at PACE, I think, um, would be a great um, source of resource as well, but also uh, to start building your connect, your network, right? So anyone you meet could potentially be um, someone that you can connect with and, and learn from and learn from each other, really. Um, so yeah, uh, any other questions? Uh, Dante, I see a raised hand, yep. Um, I saw that you guys at Career Services can help students uh, get a job, but I was wondering if you guys could help a student grow within their current company like me. Um, yeah, uh, so in terms of landing a job, it's it's not like, um, I do want to clarify, it's, it's unfortunately we don't have the ability to like say, okay, employer A, you need to hire, you know, um, this student, student A. It's more so like, um, preparing you for all those tools that we have. So if you're looking to grow within your company, that's a discussion that we have. We can have one-on-one -on -one too. Um, that's definitely part of professional development. Um, seeing ways of, that's more so understanding what kind of opportunities are available that also match up with where you wanna go. Yeah, so that, that's a conversation we can have, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions? I think we have four minutes left. Do you have any other hands or? Okay, so we have a few minutes. So why don't we take, thank you very much, Crystal. We appreciate no this. No problem. Why don't we take a break for a minute or two? Um, if everybody wants, be back here, please, at 11, not 11.10, not 11.15. <laughs> you know, be back here um, promptly. Um, but again, I really want to emphasize something. Go to career services. Talk to your faculty. The more feedback you get, feedback is often makes us uncomfortable, but the more feedback you get, the better off you will be. And I can tell you from having been to, through lots of lots of interviews, take the feedback and start figuring out what you can do to improve yourself often and make yourself better. Yeah, I definitely um, second that because um, I used to be really, really shy and nervous during interviews and after doing uh, quite a number of them, I, I definitely got a better understanding of what works for me and what doesn't. So you become more confident and even, um, I wanna say even things like giving presentations, not just in classes, but thinking about like your student organizations that you may be interested in joining. There's something called Toastmasters you can join, public speaking courses that are offered at PACE. Um, any opportunity where you can put yourself in front of a group of people, whether it's virtually or in person or, you know, um, and presenting virtually is actually a little bit different than doing it in person, right? So thinking about like making sure you're staring into the webcam so that it looks like you're looking at the person on the receiving end. Because um, if you're looking, let's say, at your presentation screen, even if it's just slightly below the webcam, it looks like you're not looking at them anymore. So that's definitely a skill or something that I'm like working on. Um, and, and it's gotten better over the last three months. <laughs> um, but even something small like that makes a big difference in terms of how you come off across to the, your audience, right? So definitely um, do the practice and, and util, use us, right? <laughs> We're here to help. So um, use all the departments at PACE. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to leave you with that. And thank you so much for listening. So I hope to see you all virtually, in person, you know, emails <laughs> um, going forward. So good luck with everything and um, enjoy the rest of summer. <laughs>